Hey guys, Jay here. We got another cool video for you today. Um, we're almost back outside. Uh, I, the last three videos, it's been downstairs in the basement. The lighting's not the best, but I promise you, we're gonna get outside, we're gonna do some tree cutting. But today's video isn't about that. Today's video, I'm gonna go over uh, ax handles. What to look for in a handle if you're going to the store and buying one, or if you're gonna make one. Just overall, what parts of it, what they're called. Um, what to look for, what's good, what's bad. So stick around. The first half of the video is about that, and the second half of the video is about treating and taking care of your handles. So if you want to see some uh, talk about axe handles, stick around. So we'll see you then. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you um, how to make a store-bought axe work for you. Now, um, I know my head's not in view. I just wanted to bring you in as close as I can with the GoPro to show you the handle because that's what we're more concerned about. You can see me in other videos. But anyways, um, so this right here is a three to five pound rated Ames 36 inch hickory handle. Now, I got this from, uh, you can get these at, I, I got this at Home Depot, you can get them at uh, Lowell's, um, Ace Hardware. But there's things you wanna look for in a store by handle. Um, I know everybody's like, oh, I make my own handles, the store-bought handles are junk. Well, yes, I had to dig through about 25 of these to find a good one, but I'm going to show you in this video, this should help, show you what to look for in an axe handle so you don't make, uh, you don't buy, you don't spend all, because it takes a lot of time and energy and effort to uh, hang a head and redo an axe, so you don't want to waste your time. So let's get to it. So first thing you want, first thing you want to make sure is, is that, um, make sure it comes with a wedge. I know it's simple. It's something small. Yes, you can make these wedges. They're, they're usually poplar. This looks like poplar, like a softwood. Um, a little bit of a scratch there, but I thought it was split for a second. But make sure they come with a wedge. Um, they all come varnished, and I figured out why. Um, they varnish the handles because they're transferred a lot from the factory to shipping and then to the store. So if somebody's hands were dirty, I guess it'd be curb appeal. I don't know. You want to get rid of the varnish, but that's a whole other thing. But second thing you want to look for, make sure they come with a wedge. Second thing you want to make sure is that this curve cut here, let me see if I can uh, straighten out. You want to make sure that this curve cut here is in the center. I looked at some at the store, which the curve cut was way over. It almost looked like, like Stevie Wonder cut it. I'm not really sure, but you want to make sure this curve cuts in the uh, center. Also, you want to make sure that there is a good shoulder. You'll see when I restore the Craftsman Axe that you want the head to slide down and literally bite right into the shoulder. So you want to make sure you have a nice fat shoulder here to work with. And then the last thing you really want to look forward to is um, grain orientation. So now, as you can see in this axe handle, this one's pretty straight and true. Um, some of them, the grain was even sideways. It, it was awful. So you want to get straight grain that runs with the axe handle. They've been doing that for hundreds and hundreds of years as long as man's been making tools. You want to get the best grain you can orientated um, perpendicular. Is that the term I'm looking for to the axe head? Perp uh, orientated straight with the axe head. And then second of all, you want to make sure it's all the same wood. There's some handles there that had a lot of heartwood, that had a lot of, of the, when they milled the logs there, it had a lot of different colors. Almost Some of them were almost two-tone. Yeah, that's cool if you're uh, you're doing an axe to hang over your fireplace. It looks really cool when you finish it because you get the heartwood and then you got you know the the hickory. But you want to stay away from that. This they say there's nothing wrong with it, but I've hung a few of these. You definitely want to stick to all solid one color wood. This one is perfectly uh, this one's perfectly cut. So let me show you one that's not. I bought it just to show you. I don't know what I'll use it for if I'll even waste my time, but. As you can see, the grain orientation in this one, you want less than 45. This one's, this one's going, uh, how do I want to do it? This one's going like kind of the angle of my hand that way. It's a little bit off, it'll do. It'll be good for like a pick a rune or something just to kind of pick logs up. But my actual felling axe, or the one here, I'm gonna be whaling into trees and pounding plastic uh, felling wedges in. I want some good grain with that. So we're gonna start with this one. So first thing we're gonna do, I went over the uh, curve cut, the shoulder, the grain, and not to buy ones with heartwood. 
So I'm going to transform this into something actually usable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the stickers off, we're going to sand and get rid of this varnish, and then we're going to treat it with some boiled linseed oil. So once you do that, um, I usually do about three or four coats. Once you do that, you're ready to hang a head on it. And then as long as you take care of it, put an overstrike collar on it, it should last you a while. So why don't we start with peeling these stickers off, getting this varnish off. Oh, one thing I also forgot to mention too, when you're, uh, when you go to a store looking for an ax handle, bring the head with you. So this is the head I'm gonna do, the Craftsman one. Just make sure that it fits. See this one goes in a little bit. This will be perfect. I'll take a little bit of meat off and slowly work it on there and then we'll be out chopping before you know it. So bring the head with you because, or tape measure, know what you're working with. You don't wanna buy an ax and handle and the eyes don't fit. As you can see, this one isn't even, uh, this is more of a hatchet, but you get what I'm saying. You wanna bring with you your head so you know it'll fit, just like this one. So let's uh, sand this down, get it treated. <laughs> the handles. Just don't forget about your wedges. These are popular. These are soft wood. Um, the more limber they are, the more soaked they are. When you pound them into the top of the head, they're less likely to split. So don't forget to stain the, uh, or don't forget to treat the uh, wedges. So as always, most of you guys know, we're going to use boiled linseed oil. We're going to do all three at once with the wedges, do multiple coats. Um, I don't know how these have been treated from the uh, factory, from the Ames company. I'm not sure. So we're just going to be safe and uh, treat them with multiple coats. So I'll show you how I apply this. All right, so shake your boil linseed oil. Pop open your cap. Uh, let's get this here. Take your straw. Wait a minute. Take your straw here cover the top of it or put it in cover the top of it that way when you come out you can lay a nice bead on the handle and then after that you can use you can use your gloves but at least the straw gives you a nice clean consistent uh, you're not pouring it in your hands. You're not, you know, the stuff, like I said, stuff's expensive. So do that again on the other side. And once you get enough on your gloves, you know, you don't have to continuously apply it. Um, we're going to do multiple coats of it anyways. So um, get the handle part. Um, you want to pay close attention. You want to get in here real good, the curve cut. You want to get in there real nice because once you put the axe head on, you pound the wedge in, you're not going to be able to hit that wood. You can you can uh, treat the exposed handle all day long, but once it gets buried in an axe head, um, you're not going to see it again. I also, too, be very liberal with the uh, heel. Again, end grain. That's what drinks the, the end grain of the wood. That's what uh, sucks it up. So you want to be real, real, real generous there. Do that. Oh God, look how much better that looks already. And then same thing, we're gonna do the kerf. So again, be real generous. Try to get down in that kerf cut. You'll thank me later. You you know, you're putting all this energy and effort in. It takes hours to redo an axe, so you might as well put the energy in and, and treat it right. Now 
Okay. Okay. All right, we're gonna let these soak. I'm gonna use this segment in three videos because I did all the handles at once, but I, obviously, as you know, as you're watching this, I have three different restorations going on, but I oil them all at once. So now let's get back to the ax heads. Nice, I love this one, this one's sweet. All right, well, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned a lot about uh, ax handles. You just you want to pay attention to those few things I went over if you're looking to buy one because um, they are some crappy ones out there on the shelves I've seen it I had to sort through about 20 to get a good one so if you guys like what you saw please uh, subscribe we're gonna be outside doing some a lot of outdoor tree work a lot of projects coming up we're gonna do a tree house we're building the play area garden a ton of stuff going on in the homestead so please subscribe stay uh, stick around for the ride and uh, We'll see you on the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please share this. Please like it. Please comment. Let me know if I missed anything. Let me know how you work on your axe handles. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.